बट But the skill was definitely there. When you talk about the performance, uh, you talk about the team spirit that the team New Zealand has been carrying. So I think all in all, uh, everything was there. Uh, of course, it's always sad to see any cricketer going out like this. But I think uh, once things are clear, and I, I I'm glad. I always favour, uh, you know, uh, a, you can you can say a rhetoric where uh, conditions meet in a in a scenario where the player and the board. mutually agree on something and you know everybody is sh- sure of themselves even the players are sure that we're not in the future plans of the cricket board and the cricket board is sure that listen gentlemen you're not going to be in our plans so of course uh, this is where we say goodbye so i like that for a fact so i think it's a it's a very uh, courageous decision at the same time and considering that there was a world cup coming up but i think he was pretty sure that uh, he's no longer required for cricket new zealand so of course 260 wickets in 64 test matches uh, which is astonishing and of course at a time when saudi bolt and everybody was dominating wagner has certainly been there uh, as a top notch bowler as well so of course we'll talk about that as well then of course we move on uh, to the t20 tri nation series 2024 uh, where uh, nicol lofty eaton of namibia has broken the world record he now holds the new record for the fastest 100 in t20 international cricket on just 33 deliveries previously this record was held uh, by uh, mala of nepal uh, he of course made it on 34 deliveries kushal mala that was another stellar innings that we talked about some time back i remember but this time it was superb uh, from uh, lofty eden who uh, of course was brilliant innings including 11 fours and 8 sixes so congratulations to him and then again another record for the books and another one to be broken i think because t20 cricket is providing us with that opportunity as well then of course we tell you that pakistan is all set to host the blind uh, cricket world cup this year the t20 world cup will be played from the 20th of november till 3rd of december this year teams from new zealand south africa west indies india are participating uh, sri lanka nepal bangladesh have already confirmed their participation as well so i think it's a monumental occasion for cricket pakistan and especially when you talk about this blind cricket team they have uh, really proven themselves it's a great opportunity for them to host it as well because i think it goes a long way when you talk about that pathway of bringing international tournaments to pakistan remember pakistan is also set to host a champions trophy next year as well so that in line i think is going to be terrific considering that cricket is coming to pakistan as well then of course we talk about women's cricket in detail as well uh, where the first phase of the women's cricket team's training camp has concluded in karachi training skills of the players were worked upon in the camp the next phase of the training camp will be held at the national cricket academy so of course uh, always a good omen uh, to get some uh, necessary practice but i really want to talk about the model that we're implementing on women's cricket because we've got to bring it at par with international teams now i think that uh, difference is something that is uh, increasing day by day where successful test nations are there now women's team are playing test cricket we're still trying to explore that brand of modern day t20 and one international cricket and then again i think across formats across women's and men's cricket the jargon is going to be same that pakistan after winning the toss if they put or losing the toss if they put into bat first that's where they need to perform so i think too much comfort chasing even on the women's side they got to bat first and set good totals as well i think that is the need of the hour so we're going to discuss all of this on the show time now to introduce our guest first of all in studios we've been joined by cricket expert and analyst taha mohyuddin khan assalam alaikum taha how are you walaikum assalam very well thank you ahmed we've also been joined uh, by a senior cricket commentator a uh, cricket expert as well one of the same voices in the world of cricket uh, somebody who always makes sense and always argues that uh, there is a long term process that is required to make players the grind is what is needed very honored to be joined by ms lina moin aziz assalam alaikum how are you wa alaikum salam ahmed hope you are well and assalam to taha also hope everyone's well in the studios well we certainly are lina it's uh, great to have you on the show as well i think let's just start off uh, with neil wagner uh, 37 years of age and uh, you know terrific stats when i look at them as well 64 test matches 260 wickets 205 first class games for him as well also played uh, 80 60 20s back when he debuted in 2009 so fair share of cricket there but what i like about this is that you know uh, there was no drama nothing created no controversy just a plain simple retirement considering that he realized he's no longer in plans of cricket new zealand 
Yeah, first of all, uh, Ahmed, we have to understand where we're talking about the civilized world, and things happen very differently in the civilized world. Uh, they don't go into a disarray. It doesn't become a topic, a topic of contention or a controversy if someone retires. Uh, it is always, like you said, very rightly and aptly, you said that it's always with both side, sides very nicely agreeing to something. Now, talking about Wagner, he, I mean, served his country tremendously. He was always under the shadows of, uh, uh, of uh, Saudi and Bolt. But... He was a potent force in his own self. His, his average is 27, uh, 25, uh, 27, uh, 0.57, I think. And he always, and always was a wicket-taking force. Uh, his, I mean, recently uh, in the World Cup, uh, Test Championship, I think a year or so ago, uh, when uh, New Zealand was playing India, I clearly remember that New Zealand got stuck and they were in a very uh, tough spot, a, st a spot of bother. But uh, you know, uh, I I wanted them to win, of course, and I uh, I knew that you know Wagner was in an attack and he's such a tough cookie that he bowled a spell of eight to ten overs, always attacking the body of the uh, batsman. He broke that partnership, got one or two wickets more and opened the way for a New Zealand victory. His attack was so consistent on the body of the batsman for 8 to 10 overs. I mean, it, it was relentless. So, he, in my book, he was one of the top bowlers, very, very underrated, under the radar, but a top uh, bowler I for one I'm going to really really miss him and I'm not just saying it because you know you have to say such things when someone is retiring I'm actually so saying it and you know me well uh, I won't say it just like that but certainly uh, it's always sad like I said to see any cricketer reach the verge of retirement but for Wagner I think it's been a very successful straightforward career uh, and like I said that I like that you know uh, him and cricket New Zealand came to the terms when they realized both of these parties that you know they're no longer in the plans as well. So therefore, I think it was uh, the right time for him to retire with grace as well. Yes, uh, certainly an emotional moment uh, for a, a Kiwi fast bowler who had played 64 test matches for New Zealand. And whenever the Kiwis wanted to utilize or uh, bring the posit positivity out of the New Zealand seeming conditions, they always used to opt for Neil Wagner. I remember those uh, test series against the Pakistanis when Pakistan uh, was uh, looking to change <coughs> difficult targets and New Zealand always had the option of uh, Wagner who used to trouble the batsman with his uh, attacking deliveries. He was very good with the uh, uh, utilizing the condition, utilizing the uh, bounce from the wicket and uh, he is one of those bowlers who made it to the top five of the all-time best <laughs> wicket takers of the New Zealand. He retains the fifth spot with the 260 wickets for the Kiwis. So, an emo emotional moment for Neil Wagner who was very effective for the Kiwis and certainly uh, uh, the younger fast bowlers in the Kiwi camp will <coughs> learn from his experience and I, I believe he'll certainly he'll look on <coughs> to uh, continue with the Kiwis for the coaching role or, or the and mentoring role in the future. Absolutely. <coughs> also joining us now on Sports Extra is uh, cricket commentator, international broadcaster, presenter and our Sports expert mm -hmm. Kiasif Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, sir? Wa alaikum assalam, Ahmed. I'm perfect. Thank you. Asif, like I said, uh, I think uh, Lena elaborated it pretty well that, you know, this is what civilized nations do. No drama, no controversy created, nothing on social media. A plain, simple retirement statement that came out from Neil Wagner. And I think he's played uh, terrific, uh, uh, terrifically for Cricket New Zealand. I mean, a stellar test career. He's been up there for the longest format of the game. Had to, fill, you know, make his place in with the likes of Trent Bolt, Tim Saudi, everybody who was performing around him. And, uh, you know, once he realized that he was no longer <coughs> in plans of Cricket New Zealand, he thought that he should go home with grace. Well, I mean, that's a really important point that there wasn't any sort of drama on social media. But yes, we have seen some emotional scenes when he was uh, uh, sitting in his last speech during the press briefing. He was crying. And of course, that we do understand after playing uh, so long for the New Zealand, for the Black Caps. And one thing was really important that uh, when the management told him that you are no more in playing 11, he simply decided that is the best time to step down and give chance to the uh, youngsters. You know, uh, more than 600 first-class wickets, more, more than 250 uh, test wickets. Uh, look at the record. And uh, rightly, uh, you know, elaborated by Miss Lena, uh, that he, he was a genuine fast bowler, genuine uh, left-arm fast bowler who used to come up with, you know, aggression. Look at his swing. I was just... Uh, 
watching that match with the guys played against Australia with the pink ball. And if uh, you see the reaction of Travis Head, the way he was coming down the stumps and beating him. So I think a phenomenal record he had. And uh, uh, I will remember his tears, the way he said that uh, I had tried my best to bring joyness in the faces of the uh, you know, black caps and the entire nation. And he said, thank you very much to the uh, fans around the globe. That's the best thing for him. So uh, uh, the, the question is, and I will mm -hmm. definitely, I'll put this question to all of my friends and especially to Miss Lena. Mm -hmm. uh, Ma'am, will we learn something from this <laughs> kind of gestures or not? <laughs> That's the point, Ahmed, and, and, and definitely I would, I, w I would like to take your comment uh, as well. Interesting, I think, but uh, okay. since Asi was talking about that uh, key test match, it is there on your screens as well. That pink ball test match that he was talking about, it was stellar performance from Wagner. An animated character as well, you know, reminded me a bit. A bit, a bit, 10 percent of Andre Nell, the way he used to play for South Africa. So you know, look at this delivery that Asi was talking about. So ter terrific. But Lena, very pertinent question that <laughs> will we learn from this? I think the first thing we need to learn that he would not immediately be drafted into any coaching or director position. He would be <laughs> given the time to you know work on those skills as well. So you know the answer to uh, Asif's question. There's a short answer, which is never, and there's a long answer. Uh, which is in time, maybe with more education, with more sensibility, with having more patience for each other, for understanding the situation better, for having a continuity in the cricket board, having more a sensible attitude, not being haphazard, uh, generally having more a calmer approach about everything. We don't have that in, in anything. I mean, uh, talk about anything. I mean, uh, we'll start fighting after 15, 20 minutes. If the argument becomes long and there's no agreement, you would see that, you know, both the parties are flustered and angry at each other. So there is a general sense of calmness that is missing in our society. So so it will take longer a lot of education has to uh, has to do a lot a lot with education everyone has to be educated mothers have to be educated to put that kind of inculcate that kind of sensibility into their children uh, you will see that educated mothers uh, their children would be different uh, and you know uh, other children would be different. So more, on, I would like to stress on the education mothers. So if you want a calmer, more productive uh, future generations, I think the the answer is in educating uh, the mothers. Certainly, I think that is uh, not just for the brand of cricket, but for developing <coughs> societies and nations as well. So uh, you know, uh, it's a very interesting story. Although it might not be related to sports, but I'm, I'm sure Asif would love it. That you know, I was just seeing a documentary uh, last night. I had some time, so I decided to switch away from sports. And I was just watching a documentary about fishing, where in the United States they were actually catching lobsters, and there was no uh, patrolling of uh, any sort of law enforcement. There was no police. There were no <coughs> cameras in the open sea. But since there is a law that prohibits from catching lobsters that are, you know, short of a certain length, uh, so you have to, you know, measure them. Uh, you can't catch those young lobsters. You have to let them grow. So the gentleman who was uh, captain of the boat was just uh, taking out those lobsters, measuring them, and any uh, lobster which he found was not up to that required uh, you know, mark under the law. He would just put them back to sea. So I was amazed. I thought this is how nations progress. No, nobody there to you know, <coughs> remind you that the law is there, but still. Uh, you're, you're able to follow them. Yes, Asif, would you like a lobster? <laughs> <laughs> no, see, uh, what's happening in Pakistan, actually, we have dual faces. And uh, we have our own uh, liking and uh, personal mm -hmm. liking and dislikings. Uh, what happened when uh, we had a case of Amir, Salman, and Asif? You know, that uh, uh, a lobby uh, was, you know, just promoting Amir because uh, mm -hmm. uh, people were talking about his age. He's just, un, uh, you know, 16, 17. So give him a chance. Well, the, the respectable nations, they don't do this. Uh, if uh, you're committing these kind of crimes, they just ask you for the punishment and mm -hmm. then thank you very much. You got your punishment. Go. You, you, are, you won't be able to, to join again the same side. What happened? that uh, you have seen everyone witness that uh, that some people in the media some people in the cricket board and some people uh, you know uh, in in our fraternity even uh, from the commentators they have uh, started talking about amir uh, mohammed amir that amir is a youngster so give him a chance and now after that we have seen the same case with uh, khalil latif sharjeel and some other players even you know that nawaz was named in the mass fixing as well. So see when you don't take proper decisions and when you don't come up with the ethics, 
you cannot grow. And that's why the rest of the world uh, see their cricketers, how they are behaving, see the, the, the England team, see the West Indies team, Australia, New Zealand, everyone, they, they're coming up with the proper ethics. They're mm -hmm. following the ethics. But now, the, as, as, as now the Neil Wagner, he has stepped down just, uh, you know, on a single note that you're no more in playing 11. He said, okay, Absolutely. fine. That's, that's the time mm. to turn down. That's the time to step Simple. down Absolutely. and give chance to the youngsters. Mm. But uh, sorry to say, as Ma'am Lena said, never. My answer is the never as well. Well, I think uh, you got to set an example at the very uh, starting phase, which is the grassroots level cricket. Unfortunately, it's the year 2024 and still in the youth trials that were held across Pakistan, there's a huge list of players in under 16 that were overage and, you know, then put aside <laughs> as well. Some of them still managed to make it back. So I think we're on the, you know, round and round that bush and once how much again. Some of the players, they were <laughs> using the uh, form B of their younger brothers. Yes, that, some of the using... Oh, that is, I think that, that should become a legal part of the law now. <laughs> how frequently has that happened in Pakistan? But Taha, another thing, uh, thing to per pertinently note here is that there was no farewell match. So it was just thank you very much, Neil Wagner. Yeah, it was very professionally handled by Neil Wagner that uh, once he saw that uh, he'll not be selected, he'll, uh, he called it a day to the New Zealand cricket. Uh, I believe in uh, what uh, the, uh, the finest uh, in the business, uh, Virat Kohli, said about uh, uh, such approach. He said mm -hmm. that one day I'll wake up and if I feel that I don't have the strength in my body and that uh, uh, fitness or dedication to give 100% for my country, I'll call it a day to international cricket. And that is what should be the approach for all the cricketers out there uh, performing for their countries. Uh, we have seen ex-cricketers saying that uh, uh, there is no replacement uh, to our uh, talent uh, in the current uh, circuit. So uh, we, uh, it's not the right time to retire for us. Uh, we should not think like this way. If we, uh, if we feel that uh, our performance is not up to the mark, if we are not consistent, if we are giving performances once in a blue moon, then we should leave it to the selectors, to the, uh, to the coaching process and the setup, and to the, uh, basically to, uh, the, uh, as Asif Bhai pointed out, we should uh, give the opportunity to the youngsters to mm -hmm. per perform consistently uh, in the uh, bilateral And even you can count on your fingertips, Taha, how many players have not been able to showcase their talent because the place was just certainly not there. Yes, absolutely. We have seen many youngsters uh, giving uh, terrific performances in the domestic circuit, in the international leagues, but not making it to the international level because, uh, as I said earlier, that they were given uh, one or two matches in tough tournaments, in tough bilateral series, in the foreign conditions, and they could not perform, and uh, suddenly they were nowhere to be seen in the Pakistani ranks. So, uh, yeah, you rightly po pointed out this fact. Well, uh, Lina, like I said, it's an interesting phase that there was no demand of any farewell match, as is the culture in, in some parts of the world, especially ours. Yeah, yeah. The, before I answer this, um, uh, okay, Asif asked me a question and I want to say something to Asif. <laughs> Look, you know, Amir's case was very different. Amir was a minor. By law, he was only 17 years old. His captain... Salman Bhatt had asked him to cheat, had ha almost forced him to cheat. Uh, imagine his mental uh, state at that time. He, if he won't cheat, he thought his captain is going to, uh, you know, kick him out of the team and he's never going to play for his country. And if he cheated, he would have got so much uh, uh, guilt. And then, you know, you, you no one do, does that with ease. So look at, imagine the boy's state of mind. And you talked about civilized countries. In a civilized country, he wouldn't have been sent to jail. He would have been sent to rehab. And he would have been, after three or four years in rehab, he would have been allowed to continue his career or his life so he could be a good model citizen in the society. And that, and you know, those civilized countries, Mike Arthurton and Jeffrey Bycott, those were the people who... Uh, you know, uh, pursued Amir's case. So you have to understand that poor Amir, everything is not black and white in uh, life. There is a lot of grey matter in life and Amir's case is a, is a, a glaring example of that grey area. The grey area where things happen. Everything's not black and white. So, you know, his case, 
I'm telling you all this in detail because I know you respect me and you always shown great respect for me. So I want you to understand this case once and for all that it was different. Amir and apple and oranges are not the same. Amir was different to Asif and Salman Bhatt. Thank you. Absolutely. And I think uh, uh, majority of that, it really pains me to say that the biggest loss for Pakistan Although people talk about Muhammad Amir and the skill that he possesses, people talk about Muhammad Asif. But let me be very honest, in the uh, face of Salman Butt, Pakistan lost a really good skipper, a really good left-handed batter, somebody who could have continued for over the years uh, as skipper of Pakistan. So I think it was a very dark day for Pakistan cricket. Uh, but like I said that, you know, things... Uh, in, <clears throat> in the international circuit give us a lot of example as Asif said that you know uh, it's a test case for us to follow as well but the fact is that you know Neil Wagner uh, I think from all of us congratulations on your stellar career and we wish you the very best in uh, the next phase of life and I think uh, you know as Asif mentioned that the question he raised that he wanted to put a smile on people's faces and create happiness I think he's certainly done that so congratulations to him his family his coaches, Cricket New Zealand, especially his, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> state team where he was playing, his club, the school he probably grew up in. Everybody uh, shares the joy of this stellar career. Now we uh, come to a very interesting uh, moment in international cricket where uh, Asif, once again, the record for the fastest 100 has been beaten in T20 cricket. <clears throat> Kushal Mala previously held this record of 34 deliveries and now a young man from Namibia has done it in 33. Well, uh, I think Namibia is famous for the elephants. And we do remember that what happened in the last T20 uh, World Cup when Pakistan faced uh, uh, against New uh, Namibia in UAE. And everyone was talking about the Namibia's elephants. And now everybody is talking about this youngster, 22 years of age. And look at his uh, um, exciting innings. Uh, Ahmed, if you see that... Uh, uh, if you see the record of Namibia's cricket, in 1992, they got uh, associate membership. And in 2003, they got for the first time, uh, they've qualified for the World Cup, ODA World Cup. They faced against Zimbabwe. They lost by 80 runs. But if you see their T20 record exclusively, it's tremendous. They've played 53 games out of 53. They have won 36 games. Though, of course, they're playing against the associate members, uh, the way now they're playing against um, in Nepal. And in Kirtipur, it, it happened. And uh, I was watching his innings, to be very honest, that what a player he is. Um, this is his first 100 in, um, in an T20 career. And um, uh, he had played uh, 36 one day international matches as well. Namibia has, uh, you know, Namibia have six cricket stadiums out of the six three already they have hosted t20s and uh, uh, one internationals so what a jubilant day for the namibia cricket the way they have enjoyed mm -hmm. uh, uh, it reminds me when shahid afridia has done uh, this incredible job uh, 137 deliveries in odi against sri lanka so the same feelings same joys i think this is the best time because, the because they're not a test playing nation i won't put their indicator on first class cricket but even uh, nicole lofty eaton has played 41 list A games. So I just want to continue that argument that we've been having throughout the week as well. Yes, and uh, so and, and, and do remember, he was a part of Namibia under 15 yes. as well. So pathway cricket structure, really, yes. yeah. So pathway cricket really helped. And that's why, you know, when we talk about uh, our previous skipper, Sir Fraz, uh, though we always criticize on his captaincy, but he remained same under 15, then under 19, then, you know, uh, Karachi region, then came up for Pakistan, then in franchise cricket. So if you are giving chances properly to the players who are performing well in their pathways, cricket and the domestic cricket, they would be asset for the nation. Taha, uh, a great feeling obviously that he's in the record books now. And obviously I think for uh, associate nations, emerging cricketing nations, they need role models and individuals to spread the game further. Yes, absolutely. Um, a very fine innings. It's not e easy to uh, come out there in the middle and score a 33 ball century when already three wickets are down. 92 runs came off the boundaries of uh, Lofty Eaton's batting. And uh, previously we saw that uh, Shahid Afridi held this uh, the record of the fastest century for a longer period of time because there was no T20 uh, cricket in the international circuit. But now with the introduction of T20 cricket, uh, we saw Cody Anderson breaking Afridi's record and now uh, suddenly uh, 
quick succession of uh, fastest uh, century records. Uh, previously, it was being made in the Asian Games in China. Yes, one could say that uh, there were shorter boundaries, but uh, with the uh, consistency of T20 cricket, we'll see these records uh, uh, shall be broken uh, in quick succession and uh, certainly a very uh, positive uh, uh, factor for the associate playing nations that these rec records are coming from uh, batsmen uh, playing uh, in their teams. Uh, Lena, how would you uh, see this, uh, you know, as a, a real omen that we talk about these associate nations or developing nations producing stellar performances? I mean, the journey of Scotland, the journey of the Netherlands, Ireland already now a test playing nation, also Afghanistan. And now when we look across that, you know, we see nations like Namibia who are performing pretty well as well. Uh, a lot of uh, inclusivity is going into the game as well. It's absolutely fabulous for the game of uh, cricket, the way it's spreading, the way you see performances. I mean, uh, stellar performances, like you said. I mean, uh, every now and then you keep hearing about these knocks and these five wickets and uh, uh, beautiful uh, catches. And uh, But you don't hear so much about the catches because, of course, you never have catches record. You, don't, you never get to see, oh, this was the best catch of the century or something. But yes, you do hear about a lot of the bowlers and the batsmen, particularly the batters. And because there is so much one-day cricket and so much league cricket, although I'm not a big fan of the league cricket, but one thing that it's doing for these associate nations is that it's giving its players chances to go and play competitive cricket. Uh, if play, uh, players like Lofty are spotted and other players uh, like Vijay and all these, they get uh, a chance to harness their skills, uh, to get uh, you know their skills in better, in better structure, in be better order, and then they can uh, go and perform for the country. Uh, so I, I feel uh, the leagues have played a very important part in this uh, uh, area, uh, which is like uh, improving the talent in these associate nations. And uh, but this, of course, is one of the uh, one of the very very best uh, performances uh, but it's really heartening to uh, you know hear about uh, players uh, from these nations coming up with the, these uh, fabulous performances and long may this continue Absolutely, and Asif, uh, it is also pertinent to mention that you also <coughs> took two wickets. So, it's an all-round performance. Also. Yeah, right, I'm lucky. You know, this is uh, really interesting to watch because uh, nowadays it's really important. If you're a good batter, you should uh, be a good bowler as well. Sometimes your team require your services in bowling. And uh, this is what happening in T20 cricket. If you're not able to perform uh, good with the bat, now there's a chance to bowl uh, and get some wickets. So, I think that in the Namibian cricket, they are, uh, you know, getting improvement day by day. Um, and uh, they have qualified for the upcoming T20 World Cup as well, which will be happening in West Indies and in USA. So we'll be watching their action th there as well. Certainly. And of course, uh, congratulations to Mr. Eaton. I think he's uh, made a lot of these people proud. And it's interesting how Cricket Namibia is progressing up the ranks as well. And I, that's why I do talk about that in the next five years. As I see it, we're going to have a lot of competition as far as teams are concerned. And therefore, I think teams really need to step up their performances as well. Because I think that concept of minnows is no longer there. Every team is uh, coming up as a well-prepared team, especially in T20 cricket. I think that's a format that can produce uh, insane results for any team. Now, of course, uh, we come to some terrific news where Pakistan is all set to host uh, the blind <coughs> T20 World Cup this year. Uh, and uh, a number of teams are coming. A number of teams have already confirmed. And Taha, it's great to see that, you know, international cricket is going to continue in Pakistan. Well, Ahmed, uh, once we talk about the roadmap of uh, revival of international cricket in pa uh, Pakistan, then uh, organizing such events and uh, we'll be hoping to see the Champions Trophy in Pakistan as well. So these uh, events and the uh, uh, organizing T20 leagues uh, where international cricketers will be part of those leagues and uh, th they'll be a very good case study for future ICC events in Pakistan. And I believe that uh, previously uh, having that Pakistan Junior League organized in Pakistan also paved the way for uh, international events to be held because uh, mentors from international cricketing arena joined that event. Then we already have the Pakistan Super League going on. And, uh, and certainly this will be a, uh, a very good step towards the uh, upbringing of uh, women's cricket in, uh, uh, sorry, the blind cricket in uh, Pakistan. So. Uh, certainly, I would uh, agree with uh, your statement. Uh, Lena, uh, a pathway to cricket has certainly been there. Now, international teams have toured Pakistan 
and uh, you know uh, right now hosting another uh, event which is the blind cricket world cup this year uh, is another feat another feather in this cap because obviously a lot of international teams are going to be coming and obviously we did talk about the fact that pakistan is also set to host a champions trophy absolutely i mean these uh, events are very important uh, not only are they encouraging a certain section of our society to be a part of normal activities the blind and the special uh, uh, people it's very important to sort of uh, uh, integrate them into society vis-a-vis uh, -vis sports so it's a very important uh, important and good thing that way and also like you said you know it's a, a road map for the upcoming international events may it be the champions trophy or other bilateral series and then a lot of networking also goes on in the at the sidelines of these events we don't see them but you know their officials who come and uh, talk to our officials their the support staff uh, which comes with those teams they go back and talk to their cricket board and a lot of goodwill is then increased uh, which then brings other teams uh, to pakistan like taha was saying uh, talking about the junior uh, uh, the, the the junior psl which was very important also or the junior world cup is also very important that way uh, because a lot of network networking goes on the sidelines of that which then becomes uh, very important for a country like a country like pakistan certainly uh, asif uh, as a broadcaster yourself as well you understand the dynamics that go into any host nation that is hosting a tournament especially uh, an icc event we're all set to host a champions trophy but this year we've got a blind cricket world cup which is another opportunity to bring international teams and of course that exchange of cultural dynamics you know experience uh, knowledge sharing everything is going to be on display uh, well i do remember then uh, the day when black caps they had decided to go back from pakistan and uh, uh, everything was ready here and we were uh, waiting for the live action and suddenly a news came that the New Zealand is going back. After that, um, uh, you know, Pakistan uh, was suffering, of course. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the way the Pakistan team performed in, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the rest of the tournaments, in World Cup, and that was on the, the you know, uh, the, the, the chairman of cricket ball at that time, that his decision was absolutely brilliant. And now, what these kind of tournaments when happening in Pakistan, you know, uh, the, the franchise cricket is happening, Australia visited, England visited, South Africa visited, and uh, West Indies, Sri Lanka, every team is visiting to, visiting to Pakistan. And the message is very clear that the Pakistan is safest country, and the, uh, the people of the Pakistan, they're loving, they're, uh, and their hospitality is famous all over the world. This is what I have uh, spoken to the, the, some players, some international players as well, and they were so happy. So I think the blind uh, World Cup and uh, congratulations to the uh, Blind Cricket Association, the way mm. they are struggling, they are working really hard and, um, um, and, and, and everyone is with them. This is the time to bring uh, sports back in Pakistan with the full force, with the full power and back them and tell them, yes, we Pakistanis are united. And Asif, uh, like we, you know, we were discussing this as well uh, uh, on the show yesterday, uh, that the Honorable President of Pakistan also called the blind cricket team to appreciate their performance. They had a chance to, you know, explain some of the challenges that they're encountering as well. So structure-wise, I think, because they've been the sole team producing results consistently, structure-wise, there are so many things that we can do for them. Yes, Ahmed, and on this platform, I would like to request to Shirazi Saab, to you, please uh, 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 invite their captain, their coaches mm -hmm. in our show. This is the best time to support them. And of course, that I'm quite sure that the Shirai Sub is always really vigilant and helpful for these kind of activities. And uh, 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 people like Miss Lena, you know, the, the reputable people, and uh, they belong to this fraternity. And of course, when we are together to supporting them, as you said, that the uh, Honorable Pre President met and uh, appreciated them, this is the way that we could go ahead and we could promote our sports. And uh, Taha, obviously, structure-wise as well, like I said, that there's a lot more that we can do. What we see now, when, when they get any sort of encouragement, especially on the state level, it goes a long way. Now they're going to be hosting a World Cup. So, you know, most of these would be playing a very first tournament in their own home country as well. That also, you know, goes a long way as far as your career is concerned. Yes, uh, I feel that uh, PCB will also be playing a vital role in organizing this World Cup. Uh, they should bring more initiatives to uh, the broadcasting side of uh, this World Cup mm -hmm. that uh, 
uh, more audience uh, gets uh, hooked to watching these matches uh, for the encouragement of these players and for the encouragement of the Pakistan team uh, playing this tournament and uh, the coaching uh, camps uh, should be organized on a uh, frequent basis uh, so that uh, the the sport for uh, this section of the society uh, it uh, gets enhanced and uh, and certainly the the nation which is deprived of uh, good uh, sports uh, happening in the country it gets a chance to uh, experience uh, this uh, tournament certainly and uh, i think it's a great omen and i completely agree with taha that a lot of us need to go out there support these teams uh, i think on the broadcast side of it on the marketing side of it as well there needs to be a lot of fanfare a lot of hype it is a world cup at the end of the day and it needs to be celebrated as a festival as well and you know when, once we go out in large numbers to support team pakistan i think that's where uh, they will truly feel that they are also equal superstars who have represented pakistan cricket with great uh, pride and dedication so i think certainly that should be there as well now of course uh, we come to another part of the show where we're of course discussing women's cricket uh, the training camp has concluded and of course the next phase now would be held at the national cricket academy there were different skills uh, that were focused and worked upon in this women's uh, training camp that was held and uh, lena the fact is that we've seen some frequent training camps now but like i said that on one uh, page we see developing nations playing test cricket now in the women's realm and we're still trying to explore that modern brand of cricket in t20s in one days yeah i mean uh, i'll have to agree with you there is no other way for me i am such a connoisseur of test cricket and then india and new zealand and australia they're all playing uh, test cricket women's test cricket uh, the other day some top commentator was saying uh, uh, that you know effectively uh, he said that you know the pakistan team is the fourth rank team in the world so yes they should be playing test cricket i I have had a chance to be a part of uh, uh, last two years. I've, I had the chance of uh, commentating upon their matches. They've done really well. They're a very upcoming team. They work hard. Uh, they've recently uh, gone to uh, New Zealand, done so well. Uh, so, you know, they need to be encouraged there. Uh, and I keep saying that. And, and, you know, I've been saying this for years and years, that their money needs to be at par with other countries, how much they're paid. And that is a form of encouragement, which is essential. Then, of course, test credit needs to be organized. There is no, I mean, there's no difficulty in do, doing that. We have the grants. We just need to get sponsors. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, you know, there used to be under 19 test cricket. I remember uh, Ramiz Raja and uh, Salim Malik. Salim Malik was the captain and Ramiz Raja was the vice captain. And there was a three match test series between the Pakistan under 19 and the Australian under 19. And those these guys were then under 19 as are not even born. So, you know, this used to happen, needs to happen. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, Asif, uh, the fact is that the skill <coughs> level is certainly there, the talent is there as well. Uh, one thing we need to do is bridge that gap of, uh, you know, <coughs> seeing that, you know, uh, our style of play is something that the world has moved on from now, especially women's cricket. And I see a lot of these younger girls now, and even we saw this in the National Women's T20 Cup as well, who've got the talent, they just need the right amount of guidance to, you know, pursue it further. Uh, well, uh, Ahmed, the question is, do we follow the, the structure of Indian Cricket Board and the Australian Cricket Board, the way the salaries are equal for the men and women cricket, mm -hmm. and uh, e equal opportunities, equal benefits? I think that are we moving towards uh, that or not? This is the question first. Secondly, uh, uh, it's really important to understand that uh, now this is the time, best time, to you know, uh, promote college cricket. For the, uh, for, the, for the women, for the betterment of the women cricket, we require college and school cricket and then, of course, and universities. Uh, and high quality uh, one. And high like quality, it, of it course. It breaks my heart to say that we had a national tournament and that too without commentary. Let me be very honest. Yes, and, uh, and, and who's the responsible? Yeah, the That's the question. Obviously and the of course, that, uh, this question will definitely will be asked to the chairman of Pakistan Cricket Board mm -hmm. or the responsibilities that who is the responsible that was a joke to be very honest for mm -hmm. me that the women cricket is happening and the prior cricket the national t20 world cup is happening and there are they there won't be any commentary i think uh, uh, miss lena uh, uh, should have known the fact that what happened actually but mm -hmm. anyways when you are promoting your girls cricket women cricket it's really important to go to the roots and uh, domestic cricket 
and of course colleges universities they will be really helpful as we were discussing about the you know other uh, uh, like blind cricket that mm -hmm. everyone should require to support them this is the same thing that we should require and we should support to the women cricket either it's the school it's college it's a regional cricket it's a club cricket anywhere i've uh, seen uh, nowadays that uh, in lahore women cricket is happening anywhere we have found some good clubs as well i don't know about rawal pindi yes there are a couple of good clubs but uh, not in large numbers mm -hmm. so we require uh, good cricket clubs for the girls you know and uh, where they will find some security and equal mm -hmm. opportunities a safe environment safe yes. environment mm -hmm. go there and play uh, and enjoy the cricket i think the entire world now they are fo focusing as ma'am lena was talking about the test cricket it's really important uh, when you talk about uh, to improve the technique when you talk about you know the game sense it comes from the test and longer mm -hmm. format so i think uh, 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 west indies will be visiting pakistan in april yes the the women cricket is uh, training uh, the mm -hmm. training is going on and the camp is going on there and uh, coaches are working on their abilities to imp how to improve that but on the sideline i must say that we should work on their fitness we should work on mm -hmm. their uh, uh technical things will definitely come up with the test cricket uh, the th th the one thing that we can do even if we don't make any major changes uh, rhetorically or categorically right now is that you know at least improve the broadcast quality of these matches and have them broadcast for the for the masses to see as well because there is no other way you're going to inspire the younger lot of female cricketers ahmed they have broadcasted sorry to say yes. uh, sorry the yeah. no commentary yes yes sir Yes, absolutely. I mean, the, it's very heartening to see that for the last five or six years, uh, that uh, female cricketers in this country are, if not getting equal opportunity, they are getting fruitful opportunities mm -hmm. uh, in the sport. We see our ex-female cricketers becoming part of the broadcasting panel in the international and the national uh, cricketing tournaments. Then uh, we have seen that uh, Pakistani female cricketers becoming part of the uh, international franchise leagues. so uh, i would certainly agree with my fellow analysts that more initiatives uh, uh, need to be taken by the cricketing board uh, uh, for the uh, betterment of the women's cricket in pakistan and adding on to uh, that i feel that the brands in this country the multinational brands and the academia sector the universities the, uh, the colleges they need to be more um, uh, proactive in the uh, in flourishing uh, the female cricket uh, in pakistan more talent hunt programs like uh, the, the <coughs> ones which are for organized for men more talent hunt programs more uh, coaching and conditioning camps should be organized at the national level for the female cricketers so more uh, female cricketers ca could be added to the pool of the pcb then again uh, i feel that the broadcasting should be improved as uh, asif mm -hmm. bhai pointed out that Co right. uh, commentators should be brought in and one last point that i would like mm -hmm. to uh, 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 add in here that like franchise league have uh, added on to uh, ex female uh, international cricketers to improve uh, improve the uh, skill set of the men's cricketers then uh, pakistan should also think about inviting a good uh, mm. international female cricketers to add on to the skill set of the yeah. uh, cricketing we, uh, we need talent. to do that you know we need to move on from the glamour and having Uh, brand ambassadors to moving on to the real cricket focus as well but that's all we have time for but before we go lena very very quickly just a one pointer why was there no commentary in the women's national t20 cup let's go and uh, take a trip to qadafi stadium and let's ask them why not <laughs> we should and i think with lena leading that delegation there's a lot of positive things that we can expect as well but lena thank you very much for joining us k asif Tah Mohyuddin Khan, thank you very much to you, gentlemen, as well for joining us. That wraps it up from me and the entire team of Sports Extra. It's goodbye for now.